Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to the October 2021 meeting of the Gender Equity Commission. Um, commissioners, it's so good to see all of you. Those of you joining us on YouTube, thank you for being here with us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with our roll call. This is not in order, alphabetical order, so I apologize, but it's all good. We're all here, right? Okay. Um, okay, Commissioner Higginbotham. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> present, I'm present. <laughs> That's a great way to start us off. Okay, Commissioner Hansen. <laughs> here. <laughs> Commissioner Gross. Okay, not with us yet. Commissioner Hale. Present. Commissioner Schultz, not here yet, um, is hopefully joining us soon. Uh, Commissioner Coffey. Present. Commissioner Davidson, not here with us. Okay, Commissioner Corbel. Here. Great. Commissioner Ramey. Present. Commissioner Manuel on vacation, good for her. Commissioner Newman. Present. Welcome back, good to Thank see you. you. Thank you. Commissioner Overton. Here. And Commissioner Walker. Okay, I'm Amanda Nietrauer, I am here as well. Good to see everyone. Um, and so um, we're just gonna go skip straight ahead. And so as we know, We've been in a transition uh, with our administrative support. So November, we have, we will be, I will be sending you all uh, several minutes for review for November. Um, I want to thank Commissioner Overton for stepping in as acting secretary, both for today and last month. So I will be getting together with her to um, get our minutes together for us all to vote on. Um, but we will make sure they're voted on. We will make sure they're part of public record. We will be in compliance, um, but we will take care of that uh, next month. Okay, committee reports. So we did just have um, a great reporting out by our governance and leadership committee. Again, I wanna thank you all for the hard work that you all put into that. I'm very excited about you know, our, our document that's gonna come out of not just the meeting that you led, um, but also the discussion and conversation. I'm really excited about what it means for the future of the commission and, and who we are and really defining who we are in our future. So um, really great work. Uh, thank you all for that. Um, are there any committee chairs who would like to provide an update? I know that in the absence of uh, Commissioner Manuel, I do believe she mentioned that Commissioner Overton could give an update. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and turn it to you to provide an update for the Workforce Equity Committee. Hello, hello. So I just wanna say bless Janet's heart <laughs> for you know, leading us in this effort. We have been trying to play catch up for, uh, for the last six months and do it all within the last two months. So our AAUW trainings have been off and popping, not as popping as much as we want to. We've had about on average six attendees uh, in our last session and the session before. So you may have noticed the plethora of emails of her asking to send the flyer to your networks, your mom, your dog, anybody. And so <laughs> we are taking a different approach now um, for our session tomorrow, Marcel and I, um, I don't want to speak for Marcel. I'm just assuming that we're going to be at the session. We also encourage all of you, if you're able to, if you're available from five to six, to join us for the sessions to get a sense of what happens during those trainings. But we will be um, co-hosting with Megan Rose, who is the director of the Center for Women at the National Council for Jewish Women. And so this new approach is us thinking intentionally about different partnerships that we can um, capitalize on to have a targeted audience. So we're really trying to think about, okay, who are the groups of people that really need this training, right? So we're thinking of folks like Rochelle Jackson and Project Silk and, you know, folks that are really 
uh, have really built trusted relationships with the communities that they serve. So we're planning out for the rest of 2021. Um, but we we asked uh, all of you share the flyer out and if anything if there are different groups that you have great relationships with that we should know about let us know but while she's living her best life on vacation I just want to give snaps to Janet um, and Marcel have I have I missed anything or is that the long and the short of the saga of the workforce equity committee I, I think you just about covered everything there thank you so much all right yep. onward we go Thank you so much for that. And so again, I just want to emphasize that this is a partnership between the city of Pittsburgh and the American Association of University Women. Efforts were led by um, the Gender Equity Commission to bring this together, free salary negotiation, um, uh, workshops through the lens of closing the gender wage gap. And so these are free. So we really encourage everyone to take advantage of them. Anyone can attend. And we are hoping to build advocacy so people can better, um, better you know, basically uh, understand their worth and ask for what they deserve. Um, and I just, I just kind of want to put it out there. We're, we're in a um, moment of reckoning in this country. Um, there is a, there is a, a labor movement happening. Um, and so, you know, I would say almost more than ever this type of, of advocacy, self-advocacy, and also just learning and understanding is needed more than ever. And also these workshops are not just for people um, who are looking for a job. If you already have a job, you know, maybe you are looking for a promotion. Maybe you're under trying to understand whether or not you should be asking for more money. It helps you to also do your own research to look at, you know, what people in your region with your qualifications are getting for the work that you do. So it's really important. Um, I'm very excited again about this work and about the intentional partnerships that are being built out of this. So again, thank you uh, to the Workforce Equity Committee for continuing the work of the GEC to be mindful about building community partnerships. And again, really taking that lens to focus on the community. So um, thank you, really appreciate it. Um, Gender Analysis Committee, any updates? I know that you all have a lot going on. <laughs> and then, okay. And then, um, and then Sarah wants Mr. us- Mr. Higginbotham, I'll turn it over to you. Mr. Uh, Sarah wants us to do more, but uh, we're, we, <laughs> we press forward, we press on. Um, yeah, I just, just a very quick update. Um, we have been working with Janet to understand both funding and um, non-funding uh, positions and trying to find a person to help support the um, analysis work. We have uh, been in touch with Coro. Judy uh, reached out to them. We've not heard back from them yet, but hopefully we'll hear from them um, very soon. But I do think it's just important to say Janet has been very helpful um, with, um, with helping us to, to do that. And we are um, on track to review the research booklet and uh, build a, a draft of the climate survey by the end of the year. So we're, we're pressing forward, we're moving along. That's awesome. Thank you. A lot yeah, of really sure. great work. Yeah. And again, very exciting to have, you know, such great support within the city workforce. Um, you know, it's one of the reasons why yeah. it's so important for us on the commission to have individuals who are not just leaders out in the community, but also leaders in the city so that we can have the intentional support that we need. And so yeah. again, very grateful for the many hats that Commissioner Manuel has been wearing. Um, and again, grateful to the Gender Analysis Committee, like all of our committees with all of the work that you have taken on um, and being, again, being intentional about, very exciting about uh, the draft um, that will you know really help us to move forward with that work. So thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Hale, do you have any updates for us on um, CEDA and what you all have been doing? Yes. Building on the, let me pull up my notes. Um, so building on the presentation from last month and for anyone who missed it, it's substantially similar, but the local CEDAW group is continuing our work of looking into the existing county gender equity ordinance, article 101, the gender and race equity audit. Um, and I will provide the website for that, for the notes. 
We are continuing to work with uh, Pitt Gispia, graduate student in public and international affairs, as an intern for the CEDAW group. Um, she's also getting academic credit and working with a professor um, so that she gets fair, some kind of fair-ish compensation for her work. Um, and she completed an internship in gender equality and public administration with the United Nations Development Program this past summer. So she has some really good perspective on this. She is working on an analysis of the 2015 report titled Allegheny County Gender and Race Equity Audit, which is available online. Um, our current goal is to develop next steps and recommendations for how Pittsburgh and Allegheny County for CEDAW, so our CEDAW group, can proceed in terms of concrete steps to move forward to increase legal mechanisms for intersectional equity at the county, at the Allegheny County level. Um, Specifically, uh, so we're still doing research and some analysis of the report, um, but we also of note are planning to meet with our intern and with Commissioner Jesse Ramey later this month to um, discuss strategies and get some of Jesse's insights into how or kind of an early stage check in on in terms of how we can proceed. Um, the CEDAW group is also working on bringing speakers from Allegheny County ally organizations to our monthly meetings, including agencies that already report support our effort for uh, Allegheny for CEDAW. And that list is available at the Pittsburgh 4, numeral 4, CEDAW.org website. There's a list of CEDAW, Allegheny for CEDAW endorsers. We also have a goal to improve our website this year but being a volunteer group of about a dozen people, that's been a goal for a while. Um, and we also have, an, and we've made some progress on it, I have to say. Um, we also have a member who participates in the non-government organization, Commission on the Status of Women New York monthly meetings, which is a New York state-based organization or group, um, but also is looking nationally at um, CEDAW principles and, and implementation of those nationally in the US. So. Awesome. Does anybody um, have any questions for any of our, um, any of the reports that were shared out? Uh, workforce equity, gender analysis, CEDAW updates. Great work, everyone. Um, again, very exciting. Um, a lot of work happening behind the scenes. Thank you all so much. So um, I know that for new business, we were thinking about voting on um, the updates from the document that we're working on today. We have agreed to continue to review and go through the next half during our working meeting next month. And so there's a good there's a, there's a chance we may be voting on it for November. Again, very exciting uh, to have this going into the new year. I'm very excited about that. Um, Something else too for consideration. Uh, again, I know that many people are tired. However, it's not too early to start thinking about uh, serving on the executive committee for next year. I just kind of want to put that out there <laughs> for you all just to think about it, you know, as, as we go into the new year. And so we'll definitely be talking about that more um, in the near future. But again, just, just think about, you know, if it's something that you would like to do, if you would like to serve on the executive committee next year for 2022, um, think about it. Um, but we'll be talking about that very soon as we're rounding into, um, you know, the end of the year. And so um, we do have, uh, Chief Lindsay Powell with us, who does have a few updates for us. Um, I'm not sure if she is with us with us. There she is. <laughs> How are you? Hi, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, good to see everyone. Um, thank you so much for giving me some time to talk a little bit about some updates we have from the mayor's office. Um, I'll start off the grip with uh, the Office of Community Health and Safety um, as a part of, I know, the GEC's recommendations, as well as the mayor's push to have alternative policing and more public health responses to public safety in the city. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, he started the Office of Community Health and Safety, and we're slowly but surely 
um, starting to staff up for it. So uh, you may have seen a press release go out last week um, naming some uh, new hires, uh, including um, folks that will work on our lead efforts. Our lead is a uh, law enforcement assisted diversion. So essentially for those lower level offenses that don't necessitate, necessitate a criminal justice response, how can we um, uh, move those folks into the appropriate um, and more human centered services? Uh, so that work is happening and happening quickly. Uh, we're still hiring, I believe, for six more positions for social workers. Um, again, this is under the belief that there are um, other actors that could be intervening in, in issues that uh, where one calls 911 and it doesn't necessitate, again, criminal justice response. Um, we have, like I said, six social work um, positions open. We're hiring more, but the first batch is for six. Um, I believe that these jobs, in comparison to some of the other social work jobs I've seen, um, pay pretty well. Um, I believe the starting salary is 62. Um, and for a lot of social work, entry level social work issues, or excuse me, entry level social work jobs I've seen, personally looking around, it's around 40, 45. Um, so we did want to in this endeavor ensure that we're not just getting the right candidates, but paying them um, what they are worth and what they deserve. Um, so the starting pay again is 62 full benefits, all that jazz. Um, and we are really, really looking for diversity within these social work positions. And so if you know anyone who is interested in serving um, or know someone who knows someone can pass this along, we really appreciate it. Um, and we're conducting interviews as we speak. Um, there'll also be some more positions coming out for the Office of Community Health and Safety through uh, Councilman Burgess and Councilman Lavelle Stop the Violence Fund as well. So uh, a lot of things, good things happening there um, and we need to staff up as soon as possible. So uh, thank you for, for passing that along in advance. Um, the second thing I have uh, that I, I wanted to share with this body was um, our land maintenance RFP. Um, this is actually a long time in the making. Um, essentially, in the past, the city has uh, contracted our land maintenance, land stewardship work out uh, to one vendor. Uh, we've kind of scrapped this whole idea and really taken a workforce development approach um, really to ensure that we have more opportunities for MWBEs, more minority and women owned businesses um, to take a, take a bite of this pretty big government contract um, using American Rescue Plan funds. Um, our American, excuse me, our land maintenance work will be funded at $1.5 million every year. And so land maintenance may sound um, uh, uh, a little um, unimportant. I don't know if that's the right word, um, but it's actually, it's massive. When you're thinking about safety, when you're thinking about pride in your community, when you're thinking about affordable housing, um, our ability to clear land to make sure it's well maintained um, and that as a resident you could call 24 seven and have somebody service, you know, a lot next to you is critical. Um, the city has um, hasn't been able to invest in this type of work in quite some time. So to be able to do it and do it from a framework of um, equitable development and workforce opportunities is massive. Um, so the RFP went out on Friday. It's a rolling RFP. It's we're looking for a pre-qualified bidder. So you could sign up tomorrow. You could sign up March 2022. Um, what we're doing as well, we're pairing with the our Urban Redevelopment Authority to scale up businesses. So if you are Miss May, who's just got a lawnmower, we can get you uh, services as well as capacity to help you expand your business. So if you wanted to take on a chunk of this bid, um, you know, we could help you bring on more um, um, bring on more workers, help you figure out the kind of fiscal side of your business. Um, so it's really a wraparound service of, of how to get, you know, one person with a lawnmower out to, um, you know, take bigger bites of this contract to have, you know, hopefully a small business with four, five, six, 10, 20 people under them. Um, so those are the two big ones. Um, if there are any particular questions or, or things you've seen, I'm happy to talk about them as well, but appreciate the space to uh, share a little bit about um, the work that we've been doing. So thank you, Amanda. Absolutely. Um, I will I will just quickly say that, you know, from the work that I did with the city, I know how frustrating it can be for people who, especially in certain areas of the city where people feel forgotten, how frustrating it can be when you are maintaining and taking care of your home and your space. 
and the lot next to you, uh, whether it is a neighbor who owns it or someone in Florida or California or wherever who owns it and they're not taking care of it, that has direct impact on you and your neighborhood. So um, knowing that there is a way to make it easier for people to get the support they need to take care of that is actually, um, it doesn't sound like much, but all the calls that come in to the mayor's office every day, I know that all of those people knowing that they will get some relief is actually um, really, really exciting, especially given who it disproportionately impacts. So um, thank you for that. Uh, I'm also excited to hear about more social workers being employed in public safety um, and also that they're given competitive wages. Um, my recollection about, you know, six, seven years ago is that um, about 45, 48 was like the higher end. And so again, the fact that social workers are being co given competitive wages to engage in this type of work and kind of read, I will say redirect funds, but maybe we want to say adding funds to bring social workers in. <laughs> Don't, you know, um, <laughs> um, I, I hope that this is something that continues to be expanded um, in the future and give, is given the support that it needs to thrive and you know, continues to be looked at and how it can be very intentionally used and directed to give communities the support they need um, to deal with the systemic barriers and issues instead of just policing people. And as you stated, this was a, a recommendation that was in our 11 recommendations that came out in 2020. Um, and and, and um, Commissioner Ramey, correct me if I'm wrong, I recall we started with 10 and we added that one out of the urgency because of, you know, understanding that public safety is a gender equity issue. And right. so um, yeah. thank you for sharing that. Does anyone have any questions or comments for um, Chief Powell and um, what the mayor's office is doing right now? If I could add one thing, we still have that position open for a gender equity commission fellow. So if anyone knows anyone, please uh, let me know. We haven't had anyone apply. Um, I've been reaching out personally to my contacts to see if they want you know, to help out in this capacity. As a reminder, it's $20 an hour for a maximum of 20 hours a week. Um, and the position will be open until December. So we're ready to hire someone now. Um, and, and I know, uh, you know, December, end of December is very close, uh, but, you know, just again, so that you have all the capacity and support that you need. Um, I'd, I'd love to get that person onboarded um, if, and, if and when we can. I appreciate that, thank you. Any questions? Any questions for Chief Powell that has nothing to do with what was shared? <laughs> Since we have her here with us right now. Okay. If not, I'm always available to all of you. Uh, thank you so much. And I will um, uh, speak to you all next time. Unless you have, again, any gender equity fellow recommendations, please let me know. So thanks again, all. Thank you so much, Chief Powell. Um, we really appreciate it. And um, again, it's, it's I, I know I, I have appreciated uh, Chief Powell's support over the last couple of months and keeping us up to date. Um, regarding um, policy actually, um, so uh, some of you may know, um, Tiffy Simino, the, the, the manager of, of education and youth for the city in the Office of Equity was um, kind enough to connect us directly with our contacts, with our contacts um, at trying together. And so um, uh, I was provided with their policy, monthly policy updates, which I sent out to everyone. So I'm not sure if you all saw that or had a chance to look at it, but again, really exciting to see what they're doing. And they provided updates at the federal level, at the state level, et cetera. Um, what I really appreciated too, and, and what I'm hearing even from Chief Powell is um, the moves that the federal government is taking or trying to take that we know are very much needed. Um, we have talked a lot in this commission over the last couple of years about some of the issues, again, that have were a part of our recommendations that came out in 2020 
um, about what is needed. Um, I will just take this opportunity just to quickly say that in the conversation, I would like to see more people talking about and engaging in how badly we need a lot of the recommendations that are being put forth. And not just one or two of them, we need all of them. We need accessible, affordable childcare. We need paid family leave. We need our care workers to be paid what they're worth not just living wages, but paid because they care for us and take care of the people that we love the most. And we know that all of these things have a direct impact on gender equity. Uh, <laughs> there's other things in there that we need and I could go on and on. And um, I, you know, it was exciting to see that. We also know that the work that they do is in this area and you know, cannot stress enough how badly we need for people to really pay attention to the opportunity that we have to make a real difference in the lives of the people. I'm going to say in Pittsburgh. Uh, yes, it's federal, and the, the federal, a lot of federal funds are going to the states and localities to help, you know, with, with things that we need now. And, um, you know, we need these changes and supports to make lives better, and not just for people in the country, but I'm going to make it local, Pittsburgh. So I, you know, I just, um, I hope more people pay attention. I know everyone on the commission is, um, but I really hope more people come to better understand, you know, this is needed. It was needed yesterday. The, the um, pandemic only exacerbated the inequities that were already there. Uh, if we want um, gender diverse individuals in the workforce, we need to create a culture and a system that actually supports them. Um, so, you know, telling people they can choose between childcare or get paid to adopt, have a child, take care of family. I don't know. Anyway, so I was excited to see the uh, policies <laughs> put forth by trying together. Um, I'm really excited again about uh, continuing that relationship and even finding ways to 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 support them as you know, as we noted when they came to visit us. Um, so it was great to be connected to them and I thank Tiffany for that. Um, additionally, um, I want to thank the FISA Foundation for giving us an opportunity to co-sponsor their webinar series. And so um, just a quick reminder that um, the FISA Foundation has been hosting a webinar series on um, addressing the abuse of people with disabilities. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, specifically in, in some cases looking at, um, like we know in September, they had a session on meeting the needs of human trafficking victims with disabilities. The next session is actually coming up on October 20th, so tomorrow, and that is looking at survive, serving survivors with disabilities on campus. And there is another session in November. So, you know, the FISA Foundation does incredible work on behalf of women and girls and people with disabilities. And so, again, very honored that we had the chance to support uh, this event as a co-sponsor and really urging everyone to attend as they can, but also getting the word out to everyone um, to attend. They are free. Uh, and again, the disabilities community does not get um, nearly the attention that it needs, despite how many people you know, are disabled culturally, systemically. Um, and so I'm um, again, very excited to be able to be a part of this. Um, anyone have any comments or questions about any, any again, um, the policy, policy updates that were shared, we're trying together, the FISA Foundation webinars, any other news that commissioners would like to make sure that we're sharing? Yes, Commissioner Ramey. Uh, Chair, you just reminded me that it's LGBTQ History Month, that we might want to mention that, and also our very good partners at the YWCA, it's their Week Without Violence, um, and the Y's been a, a great founding partner of the commission. Uh, I know they'd love for us to spread the word. They've got some great online resources. That's an ongoing campaign of theirs, but I know many of 
our commissioners here are also involved in that work. So I uh, thought those would be both good things just to mention. Thank you. Those are both great things to mention. And I'm really glad that you did. Uh, both very important. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Does anyone else have any additional news to share? But yes, both of those are very important. We want to lift up um, everything that you just shared. Anyone else have any news or information that we need to know about or the community needs to know about? Yes, Commissioner Overton. Um, I wanted to put out there that um, at my workplace, I'm organizing a virtual panel on Thursday, November 4th to amplify um, Pennsylvania opting in to extend postpartum Medicaid. Um, and this is a provision under the American Rescue Plan. Um, typically it's been 60 days postpartum, but luckily thanks to the Department of Health and Human Services and the Women's Health Caucus at the state level, Pennsylvania is finally doing it. And people need to know about the importance of Medicaid and accessibility to you know, healthcare. <laughs> when you're experiencing the postpartum period, it's known as the fourth trimester. And during that time, that's when a lot of maternal health disparities can happen. Um, so I will definitely send the word out in the, all the registration details for that. But we're gonna be hearing from Representative Morgan Cephas, who's been a champion of this work out in Philly. Um, and I'm hoping to get some uh, people on the ground who have experience with Medicaid during their pregnancy and postpartum journeys to serve on the panel as well. Um, but I just wanted to lift that up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Again, very important, creating greater access. Does anyone else have any other updates or important information or news to share? Okay, if not, um, I do just wanna um, lastly share, I had the opportunity to participate in Vibrant Pittsburgh's REI Summit um, on behalf of the commission. I was on a panel that was examining gender equity and intersectionality specifically improving um, outcomes for black women in Pittsburgh. It was a really great opportunity to be there with other leaders um, and um, to talk about, it, it, it really did center the work of the commission in our 2019 report, uh, the impact that it's had. I got to talk about what we've been doing as a commission since then, um, but also to it, it really again shows and people really got to hear how that report has been used and continues to be used for people centering um, equity for people in our region. But again, for those who are vulnerable and marginalized, but this one specifically looked at black women and outcomes for black women, again, utilizing our report. And so um, I just wanted to say that, um, Again, how grateful I am for the work of this commission and everything that everyone has done. I did raise the fact that we're volunteers. We've been working really hard and the pandemic has been hard on everyone. And we've been very intentional and focused this year while taking time to care for ourselves and about ourselves. Um, but it was a real honor and, um, and great opportunity again to uh, not just share my experience as a black woman in Pittsburgh, but really lift up and highlight the work of this commission and um, how we are working hard to really support the region. And you know that really is work that we do. It's about how everyone else can use what we try to put out to, to support the betterment of the whole region. So again, very proud of our work and what we have done. Um, and I cannot continue to thank each and every one of you and past commissioners enough. And so, do we have, to our city channel team, do we have any public comments or anyone here to share public comments today? Anyone in the wings or the waiting room waiting to share? Okay. All right, so before we adjourn, just quick reminders, we have some free um, um, salary negotiation training coming up. We have the FISA webinars coming up. We have some great panels coming up. Um, a lot of great work being done by the commission. Um, I would like to thank everyone who was tuning in and who is gonna watch 
our meeting later on. Do I have a motion to conclude our meeting today? Motion to conclude. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And I see um, because as Commissioner Hale and Commissioner Higginbotham seconded, seconded. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, our meeting is adjourned. We will see you next month. Thank you.